Welcome to Burning Eyes Tech guys. Today I'm going to be showing you a quick short video about groups. More specifically, groups expiration policy and groups naming policy. In this video, I'll be doing a demonstration on how and where you can go and do these policies and explain why you would want to go and do these policies. So with that being said, let's jump in. All right, guys, as you can see, I'm currently on the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. This is not the only way and the only place you can go and do it. The main place you need to reach here is the Azure Active Directory. Now, one way you can access the Azure Active Directory is by going via the 365 Admin Center. So at the moment, I can't see it. So I'm going to have to click here where it says Show All on the bottom left. You're going to want to scroll down. There's an option that says Azure Active Directory. And if I click on that, give it a moment. I'm going to show you both ways. Once you get here, third one from the bottom left is Azure Active Directory. That's the one we're looking for. Click on that. And essentially where we're going to end up going is this one here. It says Groups. Now, if you do have a Zwer portal or a Zwer subscription, you can probably go via the Zwer method as well. So I'm just going to log on to the Zwer portal. I've already done that on my other tab here. And if you're on the Azure portal itself, you can go and look for Azure Active Directory in a navigation pane. So I'm going to open this little navigation pane. You can see at the bottom left, there's Azure Active Directory. I'm just going to go and click on that. So this is the navigation pane. Let's click on Azure Active Directory. And it's essentially going to take me to the same place. As you can see, it looks slightly different, but it's the same place. You can see my Contoso domain there and all that. Microsoft loves using those names. For obvious reasons, I'm going to be blocking out my, my email addresses and my domains here, so you guys can't see that. Now, considering that we're talking about policies here, expiration policies and naming policies specifically for groups, we're going to want to go to groups. So in this blade, we call this list of tabs a blade in Azure. In this blade, which is for Azure Active Directory, we're going to look for the tab that says groups. It's the second one from the top under the manage section. So let's go click on groups. And right off the bat, you can already see there's expiration and there's naming. So for both of these, you're going to find them right underneath the section, setting section, very quick and easy to access. So I'm going to start things off by going here to the expiration section. All right, guys, so first things first. Why do you want to go and create yourself an expiration policy for a group or groups, I should say? Now, this could be for any amount of reasons. Based on my experience, the most popular reason is normally because of a project. And this is because projects tend to have an end of life. So if a project's end of life is after 12 months, ideally, we want the groups associated with that project to also disappear after 12 months. Otherwise, you're going to find them hovering around on your system. And this is bad because people can go and manipulate these groups for security reasons. It's just not good to have those on your system for a lot of reasons. So whenever this pre project reaches the end of life, whether it's 50 days, six months, 12 months, or whatever the time period is, we want these groups to disappear. So this is where we're going to do it. Here you get to specify what the time period is. It needs to disappear after six months, 12 months, or you can go and specify a custom period. Here you get to specify email addresses for your group owners. Now, the reason why you want to go and do that is because this thing tends to remind you 30 days, 15 days, and one day before the group expires. This is actually pretty cool because sometimes we forget about this group expiration policy, especially if it's been 12 months, 24 months. There's no freaking way I would remember that. So about 30 days, 15 days, and one day before this policy actually kicks in, it's going to remind you and basically ask you, do you still want this group to expire on this date and this time? Because there's a very good chance that you might not reach the deadline of your project. That happens all the time. You know, that's life. So if I find that this project is 12 months long and I see that, you know what, boys, we are not going to make this 12 month deadline. We need 13 months. We need 14 months. You will have the ability at that point in time to go and extend this expiration policy. You can extend it to 13 months. You can extend it to 14 months if need be. At least then it will not expire and make the groups disappear. That's going to be chaos. So that's the reason why you have the ability to go and extend and the reason why they remind you. Pretty straightforward. Now, as for naming policies, that's obviously going to be the second tab here. Well, third one technically. So I'm going to go and click on naming. In a nutshell, I suppose, this is basically a list of naughty words which your company does not want you to go and use um, as the names for their groups. Um, it's not the only thing it is. Now, I would say creating this list of naughty words is not that difficult. This could literally just take you a few seconds in some cases. It's finding the list of words, which is difficult because you're going to have to go sit down, 
with maybe line managers, uh, department managers, and all of these folks to figure out what exactly are these words and names and aliases they don't want us to go and use. You can see it actually give us a few examples. Profane, reserved names, aliases, and probably swearing words, all that I suppose that classifies as profane. What are these words that we don't want people to use as the names for groups? That is the part that takes very long and the part that's quite tedious. So, but once you've got that list compiled, adding them to the list here is very quick and easy. As you can see, it involves a .csv file. You're simply just gonna go click on download. At the moment, if I download it, it's actually a blank file. You just add the words to that blank file. You save the file. You come back to this page. You click here, you browse for that file as you just saved. You upload the file and there you go. Pops your uncle. So in a nutshell, this is actually pretty straightforward when it comes to adding the list of words. It's simply just a matter of downloading this list, this, this CSV file, which is pretty blank, uploading your new words or typing in your words or copy pasting your words in there, upload the file, and there you go. So yeah, guys, that is expiration policies and naming policies. If you feel that this video has been informative, please do give the video a like, maybe even subscribe. At least then you will be notified if the next video comes out in this series. I'll be doing a lot of videos in this Microsoft MA700 series. There's also going to be videos about other Microsoft series and also other vendors for that matter. So please stay tuned. Keep your eye out. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye. If you love me, let me know. If you don't, then let me. Hey.